This is the boys' Gen V podcast on TV Podcast Industries. And we're talking about Gen V Season 1, Episode 7, Sick. You all leave a path of destruction behind you. You have ruined countless lives. Just look at what you did to your parents. You can't help it. It's your species. Tell them what your last assignment was for me. Kill everybody in the woods. Jesus Christ, did you? Of course not, Jordan. I'm trying to show you what kind of a monster she is. She wants to wipe us off the face of the earth. They all do. So we have to strike first. Starting with her. Welcome back, Generation Veers. Welcome back, alumni. Welcome back, TV Podcast Industry folks. Yes, this is TV Podcast Industries, and we're covering the boys, Gen V. Yes, we're talking about Gen V Season 1, Episode 7, Sick. And it's the penultimate episode. Oh, yes. We're here to kill a species and some students and have some fun along the way. I am one of your hosts joining you for this penultimate episode, Chris. I'm one of your hosts, Derek. Hello there, fellow boys and girls. Yes, I'm one of your other hosts, John. <laughs> Sorry, I'm slightly, because you almost did my one of my favorite Star Wars uh, in general Vs when you went, well, <laughs> hello, Gen Vs. It was very close. General Vs, yes. <laughs> yes. I thought I'd come in for this end. You guys have been doing such a spectacular job covering Gen V without me. I had to get yeah, in glory right seeker. the end and go, oh, hold on, wait. I see how great it is. I am a fair weather fan. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. I am a long term fan of the boys, as any of our previous uh, industrialists or any of our listeners know who will, from our coverage of all the boys. I have read every issue that there mm-hmm. is of the comic book, including the new Dear Becky, which is very good. Excellent. Uh, uh, but then also, I've been watching this along and just unfortunately, due to my own generation, what is he? My, I have a son. Yeah. He's new. He's in whatever the latest generation he was born five months ago. Uh-huh. I have not been, my time is a bit covered. And uh, when it comes in, it comes in uh, spit coverage, it comes <laughs> in uh, diaper coverage mm-hmm. and uh, screaming baby coverage. Um, so I slot in to your timetable as much as possible. And that allows me to come onto this glory seeking penultimate episode. Absolutely. And it's always good to have you back, Chris. We did mention uh, during the season that you are the one that brought the boys to us. We didn't even know about the boys uh, for the first season. And it is now the biggest show in TV podcast industries, the biggest downloads uh, by a factor of about three uh, on yeah. our podcast, which is great. Absolutely. Thank you, fellow boys and girls. Uh, really good to get your support and listenership. Absolutely. Yes. And we also got a review of uh, of the Gen V podcast uh, over on Apple Podcasts. Uh, Panuski over on Apple Podcasts in the US uh, says, I love the contrast of how raunchy and gross the show is and how sweet and funny the hosts are. <laughs> Aww, how nice is that? They really That's are lovely. sweet and funny. I bring the raunchy and gross. <laughs> so now you're going to get everything. <laughs> I kind of bring a bit of that as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also, actually, Chris. We have a new Basil Exposition. Mm-hmm. It is Ooh. Cordosa Exposition, yes. given uh, <laughs> what he was doing in Shetty's office. It was yeah. like, okay, just speak to yourself like a crazy yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, that is, genuinely, that is one of the worst things I have seen in any of the boys' shows. In fact, any of the shows on Prime Video, uh, every show on Prime Video, nobody stoops to someone walks into a room and gives a massive piece of exposition <laughs> talking to themselves. <laughs> oh, sure, he was drinking. He had a bit of whiskey. So that's why he was talking out loud to himself about a major plot point. Uh, pretty terrible, but it didn't affect my enjoyment of the episode. No, but speaking of drinking... We are doing some celebrations this weekend. Yes, this week was the birthday of one of our hosts. Oh, yes. He will be getting drunk this weekend. Mm -hmm. It is not myself. It is not Derek. Yes, it can be the one and only John. (laughs) Happy birthday, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. 
Uh, I am generation old. Gen O. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think it's ah, ow, ow. Yeah. Yes, it's yeah. ow. I'm generation O, my hip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that old. I'm not that old. Mid 40s. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Mid 40s, like I'm 102. Um, <laughs> well, you look 102, even though you're not. Right, thanks. It's the grey. I swear I'm more grey than you do. I don't think that's um, possible. <laughs> not at all. I'm Great practically stuff. ready to start my uh, mole Santa career at Christmas with the amount of white I've got. <laughs> Unfortunately, with no facial hair, that wouldn't work uh, no. for, for Mole Santa. Uh, yes, happy birthday, John. Uh, again, uh, we've been celebrating uh, all week, uh, and we are going out <laughs> the weekend to properly celebrate yes. uh, with other people. Uh, we've been doing enough celebration on <laughs> Not our own. Just by <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> But, yes, before we uh, move on to our spoiler-filled discussion of this episode of Gen V, episode 7, sick, a, a little announcement. Yes, it is our campus announcement, uh, fellow boys and girls. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, you should head on over to our website at tvpodcastindustries.com where you can subscribe to any good or evil podcast player of your choice you can also leave a voicemail over on the website as well for feedback if you want to get involved with our feedback section of course you can send emails to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or pop on over to our facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash tv podcast industries where you can leave any thoughts observations theories comments whatever you would like apart from anything rude, uh, on uh, our spoiler-filled posts for each and every episode right. of Gen V. Ah, you can leave rude things. Just yeah, don't you get can. yourself banned from Facebook. Uh, that's never <laughs> never fun. Uh, and just as a reminder, we are continuing our Gen V student bar quiz with the seventh question available later on in the episode. Gather together all eight answers to the pub quiz at the end of the season and email them to us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com to be able to the chance of getting your hands on some Gen V goodies. Uh, all questions so far are available over on tvpodcastindustries.com. Um, we will be having our big wrap-up episode. It's kind of sort of going to be our 800th episode. I think we've actually passed 800 episodes already, but uh, it will be our 800th episode celebration uh, when we go through our four pub quizzes and give out loads and loads of goodies. Excellent stuff. Yes, that's the plan. Yes. I'm much like a student that comes home and asks you to do the washing and a bit of cash for some drink. Why not think about supporting our podcasts by helping us with our laundry fund by heading on over to patreon.com slash TV podcast industries and considering giving us a monthly stipend towards our laundry and beer or head on over to buymeacoffee.com slash TVPI where you can buy us a coffee and just keep us going in our late night Study sessions. Hmm. Editing. But, yes. And of course, you can yes. always uh, subscribe and share the podcast. Because sharing the podcast is what? Sharing the love. Sharing the love. Exactly. And the, usually that causes an STD in It countries. does, mm. yes. But not on the virtual sharing of the podcast. Yes, and as long as you're wearing protection as well. Well, yeah. as we yeah. say, <laughs> it is TV Podcast Industries. It is the Gen V podcast coming in your ears. Exactly. <laughs> with all that said and done speaking of the gen v podcast gentlemen should we jump into our discussion of this so with all that derek do you want to tell us who gave us what where when and how with the episode details absolutely the show of course is developed by craig rosenberg evan goldberg and eric kripke the showrunners for the show are michelle fasakis and tara butters of course based based on the comic book series by garth ennis and derek robertson executive producers of the show include eric kripke seth rogan and evan goldberg uh, this episode was written by chelsea great an executive story editor on the show and was also a writer on the tv show for the people this episode was directed by Shauna Stein. She has directed episodes of Power and will direct season four, episode five of The Boys. You will also see her in a scene in Kill Bill volume two. She's one of the bride's friends. So, very good. Yeah, you'll, see, you'll see her in there. Uh, very quick scene. But uh, but that's uh, that's a little claim to fame that always appears in her uh, in her biography. Very good. Very well written. Very well directed. Uh, this episode, I must say, there was some very cool stuff yeah. in here. Um, John, do you want to tell us what they gave us with your synopsis for the boys, Gen V, episode seven, sick. Sure. 
I think you should call me Exposition John from I now so. on. <laughs> While Dean Shetty is with Dr. Cardosa in the woods to observe his latest developments to the virus on the imprisoned soups, she receives a call from Kate, who wants to meet her. But Shetty, unaware of the plans being made by Kate, Marie, Jordan and Andre, can only meet later due to an important meeting in the city. However, Jordan is still suspicious of Kate and her newfound mind-reading abilities, and persuades Marie to try another route to expose Dean Shetty. They break into her office, where they learn Shetty's family was killed in the plane crash of Transoceanic Flight 47, caused by Homelander, and also overhear Dr. Cardosa rambling about the virus that will kill all soups. They bring their evidence and present it to Victoria Newman, a politician on the vice presidential trail who is at Godolkin University for a town hall meeting. Meanwhile, Dean Shetty's meeting in the city is with one Colonel Grace Mallory in a back alley downtown. Shetty needs her help to hide the development of the virus from Vought and to enable its transmission globally to kill all soups. But Colonel Mallory refuses the offer. As Shetty departs, Mallory secretly orders someone to observe her. While Kate and Andre wait for Dean Shetty to return, they see a TV interview with Andre's father, Polarity, and it becomes increasingly apparent to Kate that the two have become estranged. But Polarity suffers a seizure mid-interview. Andre rushes to his father in time and joins him as he is evacuated to the hospital. Elsewhere, Senator Newman is trying to garner support for a campaign at the town hall meeting, but soup student protesters led by Rufus incite a riot in the lecture theatre, chanting Soup Lives Matter. Sam gets caught up in the situation and seemingly is sympathetic to the possibility of a future where soups are better than humans. While evacuating, Victoria Newman meets Marie and discovers they share similar powers and upbringings. Marie tries to convince Newman to help her expose the, the woods to Vought, but Newman tells her to focus on one path, convincing her that she will handle it and for Marie to pursue her dream to become the first black female member of the Seven where she will have real power and influence instead. After learning that Dean Shetty does love her, Kate forces Shetty to reveal the truth behind the woods and her motivation for creating the virus. Despite her motherly love, Kate forces her to slit her own throat and controls Marie to prevent her from keeping Shetty alive. Following the information from Marie, Senator Newman secretly meets Dr. Cardosa. He gives her a virus sample before she kills him, exploding his head to stop his knowledge from spreading, but sadly not his brains. <laughs> a true American hero. Ah, head popping. Would it be the boys if there wasn't head popping? Absolutely. I, I, I was really trying not to watch that. I just was like, when is... The exploding head's going to happen. John literally walked out of the room to get himself some <laughs> coffee to try and avoid it. So I paused the TV before the before the popping, and it came up on screen going, "The yeah, 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 heads will roll." Is the music playing here? I was like, "Okay, well, I guess his head's going to pop <laughs> any second now." <laughs> so spoilers caused by John. Oh, it was such a good scene. Yeah, such a good mm -hmm. scene. But gentlemen, we have so many scenes to talk we about. Do. So should we jump into our moments for this? episode absolutely let's start off with our freshman moment or our small moment minor moment uh from the episode um where we always start off are there any small moments in this episode um i think we're going to start with one anyway um yeah. which is the radicalization of sam um this really comes about as sam's left behind after being brought back by emma um emma seems to have gotten the whole story of what sam's been doing she uh, learns all about his puppet slaughter and the fact that he ripped a human in half but it looked like a puppet at the time so that's fine uh and emma goes off to incinerate his clothes uh thereby wiping out all of the evidence that he, he is effectively a mass murderer <laughs> <laughs> and leaving him alone um, with the rest of the uh, the characters of Godalkin University who uh, who take him out to party. Um, that well, party... he doesn't listen to Emma. I mean, she yes. effectively says, "Stranger danger, yes. stay inside." Stay of which he does stay inside, and then inside again by c crawling into the cupboard mm -hmm. or the wardrobe of, of Emma. Uh, but obviously, he's getting pretty bored. Uh, I do like the kind of finger puppetry with the the miniature <laughs> knickers. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I, I it Super kind of fun. reminded me of there was a British TV show when I was growing up. Um, <laughs> 
high levels of production mm-hmm. called Finger Mouse, which yes. was finger pu- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which was finger puppets. <laughs> Uh, and all that back to all the UK yeah, people so, from the UK, yeah. and because of the nature of this show, I just thought of another rodent as well, and thought, oh, it's like Finger Beaver. <laughs> uh, I, I, well, look, a woman likes to have options, be it in her uh, her toys mm-hmm. or her underwear, because yep. she shrinks. I loved it. I would say, except the one I was really waiting to see was like the giant sized version. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, like, absolutely. Open and open and open. And it was like the envelope that just opens up. Yeah, the granny grandpa sized knickers. <laughs> yeah, they're massive. That actually are giant. Now. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's a pretty good one, but but actually, logically, doesn't that make sense? Because the only time she's ever grown big, um, she was told by her mom not to do it, and then she grew big this season, right? So she's only yeah. ever done it twice in her life. So, yeah. um, so I like that that uh, they kept that consistent. But yeah, she should have a the drawer below is just one pair of underwear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, we don't go in that yeah, drawer. Exactly. Um, but yeah, this was this was fun. He's just he's the wide eyed deer in headlights mm-hmm. kid yeah that's just like welcome to alcohol welcome to drugs mm-hmm. welcome to skating down your hallway exactly uh, uh, on cardboard yeah. uh, on your knees and i was like oh that's gonna hurt that's it sure, <laughs> he's gonna, kind of like such a... an old man chris <laughs> you're getting complaining about john being an old man oh, it's gonna hurt sliding down the hallway he's kind knees. of like a sponge isn't he he's yeah. just absorbing yeah. all these new experiences mm-hmm. because he's been locked up and yet unfortunately he bumps into rufus who's effectively got this world's version of a MAGA cap on. Yes. And kind of absorbs all the radicalization that's happening at Newman's Town Hall event that mm-hmm. doesn't go so well. So, yeah, it's it's just these moments, and you hear it later in Sam, where it's like, you know, with the death of Shetty, it's like, no, that's justice. Or mm-hmm. you, you, you see those side glances from Emma, when he he says something like "What are you saying here?" Yeah, you know, we're he, we're better than humans, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you can sense it, it; it's kind of infiltrated into his mind, and you know, it almost makes sense, really, given he's been locked up mm-hmm. by them um, and has been tortured by them, has been denied his rights, and all of that. You know, yeah. this is something that you can sense he would be sympathetic to. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. yeah, it's like ooh, interesting because he's massively superpowers exactly exactly it does feel like they're creating a version or an origin story for gen v's version of homelander yeah they are they're they're trying to probably yeah no that would actually be very apt because much like homelander he has mental health issues he has a very fractured childhood Mm -hmm. Um, although he's still technically going through some of it. Um, and yeah, there is also just, the, there's a, unlike Homelander, there is a love interest who, I, I see they'll try and play with that. Emma's like, no, come back to the light side. Mm-hmm. You can be good. And I very much feel by the end of this season, like, I believe as you guys announced last episode, we are getting a season mm-hmm. two. Now, it might take a bit more, probably a, a year or two years to film and put out, yeah. but. I can see this being the X Men versus the Brotherhood of Mutants using a comments reference, like like su- two groups of su- superheroes that were friends now at odds against each mm-hmm. other. The light versus the dark, or in this case, very much the Homelanders versus the boys. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're building up their variations of that, but with superpowers. Absolutely, absolutely. And it makes so much sense that the way that it all plays out. We have um, Senator Newman here, uh, well known to us as, as a character from the boys, uh, played a big role in season three and a big role in season two. Yeah. Um, so we know that she's a soup, um, but she's here on Sight try, going through this speech, trying to get people to get on her side, trying to get these kids who are soups to get on her side for her race to be vice president of the US. Um, they're having none of it. And Sam's sitting in this crowd hearing all these people chanting around him going, Soup's lives matter. Yeah. Um, you know, so it makes loads of sense that this would happen to Sam, you know, that he'd be taken in by this kind of group, given that he's a very childlike mind and that he absorbs this stuff like a sponge and spits it back out almost, almost verbatim that, well, I guess I'll follow this cause of Soup's lives matters and we're better than everybody else and uh, humans should suffer because that's the childlike mind that he has. Well, that's it. But it's also, you know, you hear someone shout, humans aren't our peers, but the the chant that they're doing is, you will not control us. Mm-hmm. You will not control that's us. And Rufus, I, yeah. it, it's the real interesting thing. You know, you see him with his uh, red um, 
keep America safe cap on. And it, it, it is that same thing. I really like the parallels here. It's, you know, the audience is pro soups, mm-hmm. but they feel like they're being targeted and have no power. Literally the most powerful individuals yep. um, believe or are being persuaded that they have no power, mm-hmm. that they're being targeted. Now, okay, they are to some extent in the woods for sure by Vought, but they don't know anything about that. Though, but they yeah. don't know anything about it's that. It's Cameron so, Coleman again inciting know? these people, just like any Fox News presenter incites people like yeah. this in the real world. He's calling out that they are the most persecuted minority in America, is the way that he describes yeah. this group of soups in the room. He is surrounded by an entire college f- room full of soups who have, uh, have who don't even know that Newman is. A super self does have compound V running through her veins, which she can't reveal to them, but she's trying to get them on her side. And again, the weak willed amongst them all, led by, let's say it, the dickless wonder that is Rufus, um, <laughs> leading them with his MAGA cap on. I mean, his Keep America Safe cap on. Um, you know, it makes sense. This is the parody that that comes from uh, the Gen V world, right? Yeah, exactly. So really good. And I mean, you know, flowing through from the boys as well, that that. That conversation, that parody Mm -hmm. of what's going on in contemporary America. Exactly. One kind of piece that I'll pull, just because we talked about Newman and this is post this conference, one thing we did find, which is really interesting to find out going into the the next season of The Boys, where we'll see Newman again, Mm -hmm. is she has the same powers as Marie. Yeah, you know, do I, anybody else feel like an idiot for not recognizing that? Because I do. Oh yeah, like I did, like because we've only ever seen her explode heads. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I don't think I was stupid. I think as soon as she came on the screen, I was like, "This is the benefactor." Mm-hmm. So yeah. I kind of, as soon as she arrived in the show, I was like, yeah. "Oh, that's the benefactor." I saw the we... trailer last week that she was going to be on the show. I went, "Oh, of course, that's the yeah. benefactor." Makes that sense. was yeah. that was the question that was answered and, and seemed obvious. Mm-hmm. But I don't know whether you should beat yourself up about not noticing that the powers are the same because all we've ever seen is her eyes go cloudy mm-hmm. and her explode yeah. heads. It right. didn't necessarily suggest that, like she showed to Marie, where she cuts her own palm mm-hmm. and. To and, and can control her blood. Yeah. And it, well, it's what it we never said, yeah. felt like that, but that is exactly how it is. And I loved how she was like saying to uh, Marie when they were sort of in the green room together, you know, you can do more. Um, you know, the powers are what that you have are the coolest I've ever seen, but you can do more. You can sense things in blood. So mm-hmm. tell me something about me and I, I that scene was really good and then just the reveal that she has the same powers and can empathize and understand her upbringing because she also went through red river yeah you know yeah uh, yep. these institutes so i thought that was really cool yeah. and i really liked it and as we as we talked about earlier on in the season the interesting thing about marie's powers are she trained herself to use the blood the way that she uses it, turning it into whips and turning it into things to lasso people. But with some actual training at this college, she could have been trained as a medic to stop people from bleeding out, which she did on her own once. You know, here um, we have Newman telling her that she can read uh, what's going on in the blood. You know, she was able to find the tracer that was inside her own blood yep. using using her powers, using her skills. But she's had nobody else to train her, so she created this idea that, she was going to be a crime stopper using her blood to wrap people up effectively. So, um, so it's really interesting just taking it from that perspective. This is a real soup training school. Can you imagine what they could have discovered among all the students, what they could actually do for good with their powers, yet they've unleashed them to do whatever they want to, basically? Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. No, and it, this is, this does bring in some interesting bits for the next season of The Boys as well, because now we know what Newman can do. Mm-hmm. Outside of just exploding heads, she she becomes more powerful, even more than just kind of eyes roll back, turn white. She can like sense things about the other people. She'll be able to sense things about Huey mm-hmm. being, and we we know that at some point that, that we know Huey has powers to a degree, and so does Butcher. So again, we get to see this play off more and. I thought it was nice. It ties it even further together, these two stories. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I got two quick things about this about this point, if that's all right. Um, 
Number it. one, uh, Polarity was supposed to hold this conference, right? He was the one that was supposed to be leading this town hall, um, Andre's father. Um, he has a seizure and has to be taken off to hospital, so Cameron Coleman has to step in here. Is that planned, do you think, that Cameron Coleman did something to f- to push him into a, a, a some kind of um, seizure so that he could take over? Because it feels like Cameron Coleman, as he always does, is inciting the group against um, yes. against her. So I wondered, was that a choice? Did, was there some kind of push on polarity that made him have a seizure? Because we haven't seen anything like that from him before, no. other than he's old and wants Andre to take over from him. No, we didn't. And I actually was thinking it was some kind of leak of the virus and this was some kind of that's first what step I thought. of it. Interesting. Um, that's what I was thinking. Mm. But then you see in the ambulance him having a, another seizure, yeah. which I thought the effects that on it were really, cool. really cool. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, yeah. And seeing Andre sort of trying to sort of combat and reverse those yeah. effects that his father is doing subconsciously. Yeah. So I was literally saying, slam on the brakes, save that poor medic's life before she gets <laughs> destroyed by all the stuff flying around inside. That was really cool. Uh, so that's one question I had uh, from from that. The other one I had, uh, Rufus, um, who is the one that invites Sam along to this great party, the town hall <laughs> speech that's being given. Um, he does grab Sam by the hand, and we know that he's able to coerce people into doing anything he wants them to do. So do you think his influence may have had some, some hold over Sam? Possibly, yeah. I wonder if, wonder if that's part of the reason why he's so receptive to everything else yeah, that's going on. We be. said it's partly to do with his childish mind and he's been locked up since he's been 10 years old and these kind of things do go towards childish minds uh, taking on these ideas. But I wonder if there's an additional element of uh, Rufus's persuasion there. We haven't seen him use his well, powers for anything other than them. He, he's he also doing. sat next to Rufus as mm-hmm. well. And Rufus was pleading that he can only do uh, these changes when he's very close to them. Yeah. So he is the right next to Sam during the town hall. Yeah. So absolutely he could be doing it. Maybe. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just thought it was interesting. Um, those two questions that I have anyway coming out of that. No, yeah, I like, I do like that question, that the, the final bit, because I think there's a potential that Rufus is used to incite kind of people towards this keep, uh, soup safe, yeah. yeah, um, kind of movement in colleges. He's like, there's people like him kind of going into these discussions where they'll, like amp people's emotions up and yeah. kind of just leverage it a bit. He's the only one wearing the cap stuff. as well. Exactly. Yes. yes. Yeah. And as we said before, he's played by one of the major actors from the last couple of seasons of Supernatural. Um, so, yeah, a very important actor to Eric Kripke. So yeah. bringing him on board here uh, makes sense that he'd have a really big role as the season rolls on. Good stuff. I think that's it for our freshman moment. Yeah, I think so. Let's move on to our sophomore moment for this episode. Who wants to kick us off? Well, just like Chris returning to the podcast, uh, as he hasn't been back since The Boys Season 3, we have the return of Colonel Mallory in this yeah. episode. <laughs> yeah. That was really good. I liked that. That was a surprise for me, actually. When you hear Dean Shetty on the phone to Kate saying, you know, I can't actually meet just now. I've got a uh, an important meeting in the city. You mm-hmm. kind of think it's with Vought, as you would. Yeah. Um, but I, I like then that you have uh, her meeting Grace Mallory. And I just liked how it played out with the other moments with... Um, Marie and Jordan in her office finding the file mm-hmm. on Trans Oceanic Flight 47, from which was the plane that crashed from season one yeah. at the hands of Homelander. Um, you know, and the setup of the motivations that, you know, her husband and her, her kid are on the roster of, of, uh, dead people from that flight. Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought then, having this meeting with Grace Mallory and you do feel like Mallory would be uh, receptive to this as she's showing her the virus results. And, um, but indeed Mallory sees it as it is. that it, It's, it's a huge step to have just purely for vengeance, you know, and she makes the reference to Billy Butcher mm-hmm. where that, that quest for vengeance has just been all consuming. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, the boys season three available now on Prime Video if you want to see the story about that. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, she's skeptical <laughs> yeah. about it, effectively calling it out as genocide. Mm-hmm. Um, and as she says, you know, talking about Billy Butcher and this won't bring back your husband or daughter. And I like that Shetty 
you know, doesn't give up here and says, or your grandchildren, mm-hmm. you know, and Shetty is of the view that deep down Mallory does agree with her here. And I think she's probably right because while she rejects Shetty's offer, it is, it is that she's had the conversation tapped mm-hmm. and has someone to follow her. Who's on the other end of the phone? Who's Mallory talking to? I kind of feel it would either be Frenchie or Mother's Milk um, okay. yeah, uh, yeah. as one of the guys, uh, you know, as the tech kind of guys in that group, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. the kind of yeah. technical experts in various things. It would be one of them kind of um, just bugging that conversation. Mm. Yeah, myself, I'm going Huey. Okay. Huey was working with Mallory towards the end of the series. Mm-hmm. He would be the one who would rail yeah. against kind of acts of war crimes. His girlfriend starlight is a soup that's true would be affected Mm -hmm. by this now to be fair the female kumiko would be also affected and we don't know what would happen with huey and butcher with some of their soup kind of compound in their their system well their their residual temporary uh compound value they were taking last season yeah that's that's true so um loads of interesting possibilities uh and and of course starlight is a member of the boys now she's left the seven and is now a member of the team as of the end of season three as well so um so yeah that'll be uh that would be interesting to see us on the other end of the call and john we called it last week. This is what we said would happen at the end of the season, that, uh, that potentially as they're developing this virus, that'll be given to Billy Butcher and the boys uh, as their yeah. weapon against Homelander. So uh, we did call it. We were close. We were close. Shetty didn't quite get the partnership she was hoping for from mm-hmm. Mallory. Um, yeah. And it's certainly the virus that has been developed is now in the hands of someone else, as we know. Exactly. Uh, but we, but we were close from, from what, what it was leading so. to. Uh, there was that big reveal at the beginning of the episode that this is nothing to do with Vought, this whole plan that's going on in uh, in the woods, that, that Chetty has taken it so far away from what Vought uh, would have wanted her to develop, that yeah. effectively, if Dr. Caradessa reports it, He's going to be the one that will be blamed for creating this genocidal weapon for the soups. So, uh, so yeah, that is absolutely, this is all Shetty's plan. And she now wants to get into the hands of somebody that can use it uh, to maximum capability. Yeah. Yeah. I do, I, I do have a lot of questions about the, the, the Mallory aspect of it because I do think there is a potential that next episode they'll end with Butcher, Carl Urban, or Jack Quaid Huey coming in mm-hmm. with a kind of how they, how they connect. The, the, the shows even further. Yeah, official confirmation from Eric Kripke. The end of this season of Gen V will lead directly into the start of The Boys Season 4, and the end of The Boys Season 4 will lead directly into Gen V Season 2. So these are going to well, be, be great. really yeah. intertwined. Perfect. So yeah. yeah, Because we did just learn in this episode where they talk about Homelander cutting a guy in half, severing a guy in half with his eyes, uh, happened recently enough. Yeah. So that was the end of last season of The Boys. Exactly, yeah. Where Homelander cut a guy in half in front of a whole crowd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, like, so we do know that this, now these are kind of spaced quite quickly together. Yeah. Uh, if they are talking about it, we'll say like a month maybe. Yeah. Like a difference. Like it's not huge. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is starting to get really, really interesting uh, how they're going to do yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. And, and interestingly as well, you know, t- to some degree with Mallory, uh, you know, she calls out it's genocide. And I do think Shetty's right, as I said. But I, I was surprised Mallory didn't take her up on the offer because the struggles that she's had, the, the, the knowledge that she's had, and certainly given, you know, the intimidation and threat that she had, because she was looking after Homelander's, uh, son in the last series of The Boys. So, you know, she knows how dangerous they are absolutely so i i was a little surprised but i think it's more of a false play by her Mm -hmm. to dean shetty yeah yeah mallory always plays all the angles and the idea that she would pick this up and go yeah okay i'll create genocide and kill every single person who's touched compound v in the world maybe that's what has been created here we don't know yet so um but but yeah it's it's very interesting to see how that played out there but then led into uh, Shetty returning back uh, to her home where Kate was waiting for her. Um, they, I think they they filmed this really well and set this up really well because you felt like maybe Shetty was getting back through to Kate again, telling her that she loved her and Kate realizing because she can now read minds because um, she's been allowed that part of her brain back, uh, she can tell that Shetty's actually telling the truth. So yeah. interestingly, 
those pills that effectively Shetty's been giving Kate for the last eight or nine years have just been suppressing her ability to read other people's minds yeah. so that Shetty can get her plan across what she really wanted to do. So, um, so now Kate is able to read her mind. But I thought it was really well set that you had the two of them together. It did feel like maybe Kate's gone back over to her side. Absolutely. Yeah. I, and I think the whole lead up before that, it was just really tense. Like, I love Shelley Conn here, who plays Dean Shetty. Mm-hmm. Just how, just the flit of the eyes, you know, as she looks down towards the hand, see that sees that there's no gloves there. Mm-hmm. And equally, Maddie Phillips, who plays Kate. It was, you know, you didn't get the sense of how this confrontation was going to go. Yeah. And, you know, because Kate is, you know, absolutely pulling out um all the stuff that Shetty has done, you know, her control, her manipulation. And it, it's just slowly, you know, the superpower of Shetty is she seems to, you know, turn it completely around by sort of talking about how she has found something truly special that mm-hmm. in, in Kate who she loves and feels as though she's almost like her daughter who she lost. Mm-hmm. And you kind of see Kate then resting her head on her knee yeah. and you're like going, oh, okay. Because then when the text goes out to everyone, mm-hmm. you are kind of, oh no, it's a trap. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it is. Um, Admiral Ackbar. Yeah, it is. It's an Admiral Ackbar. <laughs> it's moment. a trap. Exactly. Uh, and that's why I think the final scene is also so powerful. Absolutely. And also coupled with all of the conversation she's had with her friends for this episode, every single one of them suspecting that she's going to turn on them, right? Yeah. Every one of them, even within their own thoughts, are saying, don't let her go back there. She's going to turn on us. Yeah. The the great part, actually, just even on with her getting those powers back, was even seeing Jordan, like, which I'm assuming if I go back, I will see, like, Marie calls it out, anytime Jordan wants to be kind of aggressive and his point, they'll turn into the male version of Jordan. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. I've I always liked the fact that when uh, they change between genders, um, they have a full protection. They can't be hurt by anything at all. I always yeah. think that's yeah. a really good uh, use of the power as well. That's really, really interesting. They got a good version of Compound V. Exactly, exactly. But, yeah. of course, not in the perception of the general uh, the general American public and not in the perception of Vought, of course. Uh, a gender-swapping yeah. superhero, uh, not something that's going to be uh, accepted wholeheartedly by the country. Um, but no. that's that's what, again, that is the parody in, in Gen V. So, yeah. uh, so really good. But it all culminates with everybody arriving at Kate's home and uh, Dean Shetty being forced into telling them all what her plan is. And her plan is to kill every soup on the planet to take them all a commit genocide yeah. um a war has begun and she's going to end the war by taking out the soups interestingly and we played the clip at the beginning uh interestingly what you hear is kate saying we have to strike first and she's going to be the first one we will take out so kate's almost going if she wanted to commit genocide on us we're now going to commit genocide on the humans yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, thank goodness for the light relief of Emma. I did like it where she says, uh, can I get the Spark Notes version of this? <laughs> yep. Because, um, <laughs> you know, I've been babysitting uh, sort of Donald Trump Jr. here in mm-hmm. waiting. So, uh, you know, so I thought this was really kind of, uh, I, I like the light relief that Emma uh, came out with here just absolutely. to punctuate this because it ultimately, uh, as I say, that roll into this from the previous scene between Kate and Shetty uh, and where you see, you know, Kate is having to convince the others that she still can be trusted, that she's with them. Um, I like the, in a sense, maybe Shetty's play did work, but Kate has still sees through it. And I, I just like the way she says, you know, I know you love me, but that doesn't stop you being an effing bitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's, yeah. she's kind of like lost it with her. Exactly. Because the plan yeah. is she was going to kill me. Whether she fully believes that Shetty was going to take her away somewhere safe where she wouldn't be affected by the virus, who knows? But uh, I love the fact that um, it's it's like a daughter turning on her mother here. Yeah. Um, and I, I really thought it, again, just done so well and seeing the reveal of what Kate tells Shetty to do, but I think importantly preventing Marie 
from saving Chessie's life with her blood powers. Uh, you know, that was critical. Absolutely. Yeah, no, for me, I, I did the, just the, the hand out that stops Marie and is literally like touching her hand. So there she's just like, there's no way that she's going to allow her. And you could see then the hats off, like the, the acting on the scene where like slowly Shetty is bleeding out. And you do have Marie pleading with Kate, just like, and the tears rolling down her face of like, let her, um, let her kind of save her. Cause she can do it now. She knows she has that, like, that bit. Yeah. And then the flash, mm-hmm. it, it cut with her mother. Like, that was just a, a, a yeah, it was really a, good a choice. Yeah. Because it just elevates that kind of scene into even further heartbreak. Absolutely. Um, and we know that Kate can read her mind because she has her powers back and Kate is telling Marie, I'm sorry you have to relive this so she can see exactly what's going through Kate's yes. mind. Where she's going, I can't do this. I can't relive this. Please free me and I will go and save Shetty because I wasn't able to sell, save my mother yeah. when this exact same thing happened. So, uh, yeah, really, really good. Really strong moment uh, in here. But because... Marie hasn't saved Shetty here. Um, Shetty, it looks like she's dead. It looks like we had oh, yeah. the final death rattle there. I um, think so. There were still questions in my mind because of how big Shetty has been this season. She's been the big bad, really, yeah. for these seven episodes, uh, even though we didn't know it at the beginning. But because of that, there were still questions going through my mind. Was was this a plan that was concocted between them? We saw you know, the mindscape that Kate created for last episode where she brought everybody into her mind. So... Is this just another uh, mind skate she created? That's and then a, I was going, no, nah, I don't think so. I don't no, think I don't think there. so. But it's a valid point mm. if there is to be a twist on a twist on a twist kind of thing going on here. Um, but it, it really did look like uh, Shetty was dead. And again, you know, Marie kind of saying, what have you done? And Sam responding, justice. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, you this is feels like it's going to split the group uh, here. I mean, Andre didn't make it there. He decided to stay with his dad mm-hmm. at the hospital despite getting the, the message through. So, mm-hmm. you know, Andre has kind of been separated here from this whole experience that they've had to go through. Yes. And um, Marie, you know, Jordan and, and Emma are certainly the kind of trying to save Dean Shetty yeah. whilst Sam kind of watches on bug eyed and mm-hmm. um, sort of, you know, like a psychopath kind of going. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Blood. Yes. Look at it all. Justice. The ribbon. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, Kate just effectively extracting her revenge here mm-hmm. because of the manipulation. I mean, it's not that I've got sympathy for Dean Shetty, but you do, you know, she's been a great character and yeah. you would love to see her become, you know, in this Halloween season uh, a zombie shetty <laughs> maybe maybe you never know what's gonna happen <laughs> on the show honestly uh, one other thing that was revealed though uh in how shetty talks about uh the plan is that the school itself godalkin university was set up by uh thomas godalkin to study soups they were never there to study they were there to be studied which i love and yeah. um, we talked yeah. about it earlier on in the season that one of the production designers had talk, had had said the student accommodation that we see all the rooms that everybody's in there's shutters on the windows and the doors uh close and lock from the outside so um even though everybody's running in and out and they're brightly colored there's paint posters on the walls what they all are like ourselves so there is the ability for godalkin university to lock everybody inside if they ever needed that that ability so it was something in production design that that was giving you the idea that this is possibly what the place is being used for. It's used for studying suits. Well, absolutely. but So interesting. But also, more than that, that Godolkin University has been able to pull the wall over Vought's eyes. Mm-hmm. You know, Vought promotes the hell out of this. Yeah. I think it's the training ground. You know, it, it's the, the test bed or the proving ground as to whether you might become part of the seven. You know, mm. at the start of this uh, season... We, we saw a uh, golden boy sort of seeing his new uniform. He could possibly replace Homelander yeah. eventually. So that's how you feel this is. And all of a sudden, you know, these things coming through that actually Shetty's going further than what Vought is asking for around the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yes, this notion that Thomas Godolkin effectively meant that all the soups were being 
brought in there so that they could be studied rather than them studying, uh, yeah, which was great. Really yeah, good. Yeah, it's, one, yeah. it's one of those things that's written down in the writer's room on the board. They're there to be studied, not to study. <laughs> now that's the yeah. that's like the tagline they write on the board, and everything yeah. has to write towards it. But it still landed really well in yeah. Shelley's speech here. I thought. Yeah. In a week of massive moments for every episode, should we go on to our senior moment? Yes, to Noyex Newman. <laughs> wow, what, no an, Newman. what an obscure uh, <laughs> reference there, John. I know. Um, I remember it being one of the first few ads when I moved over to Ireland that was on the radio was Noyex Newman. Uh, so a twenty-year-old radio ad, yeah, is your reference to, to yes to Senator Newman. Mm, that, that's uh, that's not going to spread far and wide. I, I think. wonder if she <laughs> does sell bathrooms, tiles, and whatever else they sold. Bathrooms, <laughs> doors, floors, and more, John. That was wow. It. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't remember that well. No. <laughs> and Chris is looking at us really blankly, so it doesn't even. I'm like, he wasn't born wait, then. <laughs> it doesn't even. I'm cross so him. old. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah. So I guess our final point is heads will roll in Newman's plan itself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I'm still so confused of where Newman sits in the great Vought versus. The, the boy slash kind of the US government, i.e. Mallory, um, tr- the, what I was going to say sides, but now I'm saying I think it's a triangle of like, is Newman actually kind of working for Vought and they're trying to like, is, or is she a third party now? Is she her own thing? Mm. She is going like rogue. Um, we know she is now a soup. Yeah. We now know her power set. Mm-hmm. We know she's going for vice president. Is her kind of she her own thing, or is this a, a Vought plan all along? Is she the super agent, like a super agent for Vought? It's interesting, isn't it? Because you get the sense there's Vought backing there, and she's happy to take that. But at the same time, I think from the last season of The Boys, there was a moment where she makes a pact with Homelander as well, mm-hmm. and yep. so I think she might be. A, almost chameleon like in the sense that yes it's also for herself but she's willing to sort of make those deals along the way in a sense a bit like dean shetty you yeah. know and fly under the radar absolutely and also remember who was the person that brought her up the person that got her out of red river was stan edgar who she eventually turned on who was the leader of vault um mm-hmm. she is massively ambitious there for the power and her having this in her back pocket, a possible way to kill any soup that she comes across. Yeah. This is a massive game changer for a person who was told, you sit back there, Robert Singer is going to become president of, of the US, you can be the vice president, that's all you're good enough for, and that's the deal that's been made. I think this is yeah. her big her big ace in her uh, deck of cards and you get the hand. sense yeah. of that ambition when she talks to marie where you know she says you've got nothing until you're the first black woman in the seven mm-hmm. you know with the phone to the president and all that influence politically culturally from what vault brings you so yeah. it's not just laying her own way you almost get the sense she's trying to think about her legacy because she really tells marie in that moment you know go back to being a student and focus on this path because you can only choose one so you know she's trying to focus marie as well mm-hmm. uh down this road so Absolutely. you get but that that's sense her benefactor of, so again yeah. that's another bit of power that she exactly. has that, exactly. that newman yeah. has you know so yeah, yeah. Uh, it's an interesting play and definitely if there's anything going to lead into the boys season <laughs> season four this is what's going to lead into it, right? Yeah, and also that the whole Red River Institute element that, you know, she talks about them having the same powers, but mm-hmm. that, you know, they're not the right type of powers. That's, again, another reason why she's probably concealing them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of like the fact that, you know, we've seen a lot about those soups that haven't quite fitted the mold. Yeah. Through the cartoon series mm-hmm. and also, mm-hmm. um, more so in Gen V this time with yeah. Marie, you know, saying how her powers aren't going to play well in the Midwest mm-hmm. or in Texas, that kind of stuff. And you get the sense 
that you know is her deal with Homelander because actually within the soups it's that fracturing within the soups as well that maybe isn't at the surface or anything but to her she also wants to take down the the golden soups you know the golden boys Mm -hmm. of the superhero world because Mm -hmm. she's the one that's been told you're nothing you won't amount to anything and so she's put in the cover story changed the files on her record so Mm -hmm. that she can fly completely under the radar and you know that's why her walking off with that weapon with the virus Mm -hmm. she's probably happy that it's not airborne contagious yeah, unless absolutely. he unless cardosa managed to do that off screen you know and that was the report he was putting down you just mm-hmm. i mean you, you never know yeah. but I, i'm suspecting he's you know she's got that earlier version of it where it's contagious but it's not super contagious like an airborne transmission yeah yeah, like, no, I, I think because even Shetty was saying that she needed more time to get yeah, to that position like, at that time. If you put that into hero gasm setting, <laughs> then all of them will get it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, 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 no, no. All you got to do is share some bodily fluids, and there's a lot of bodily yeah. fluids shared in hero gasm. Yeah. yeah, some walking into them. <laughs> True. Yeah, I, 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 I really like where they're setting Newman up to be. Um, I, and I think I kind of remembered there was kind of like. A hint of well, if she gets vice president, she's next in line, and anything can happen to her president. Exactly. So very much, she is planning to off the president yeah. and become the most powerful person. And we um, also thought it would be kind of head explosion, but we can see that now she could do it much more subtly uh, yes. with her powers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, she can control any part of the blood. So it just uh, there, you have a heart attack. There you're done. You're dusted. Yeah. dusted. Um, I like how this sets things Definitely. up. I like how this sets going into the the finale. We are really seeing a, a potentially global virus potential that can kill soups, millions of soups. We that has now kind of been taken. I wouldn't say taken off the board, but really actually put strongly into. The into play, it's in play. A potential yeah. play. Exactly, it's definitely yeah. not off the board. It's just in a different person's hands than everybody that created it was expecting it to be. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, it really does set up. As we said, heads will roll. It sets up where we're going to be mm-hmm. because is Marie going to side with Newman? It, yeah. Like, is she going to do as she's told? Is she going to stay a Godolkin? And are we also going to see then this other fracture of this group of kind of super life matter? Mm. So, like, are you going to start seeing this very, this fractured two team, uh, going into next year, next year's of Godolkin? Or are we leaving Godolkin? Yeah. Is, the, is Gen V now going to be very much the, the them versus the world? This new version of the boys, yeah. the young ones, if you will, yeah. um, going off against the, the wider power that be. Um, there's still a load of people down in the woods. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They have to kind of free those people, yeah. Like so, because that was the that was the last mission that Chetty had left for Kate was to kill everybody in the woods, right? Um, that's yeah. the one she didn't do effectively was that she was supposed to get in there and kill everybody in the woods, uh, and that would be the last mission, and then they'd ride off into the sunset together. Um, but uh, but she refused to do it. So um, so yeah, you're right. There's there's a lot of people to free down in the, in the woods. Yeah, but that's why I felt maybe the virus is ready for herbal and transmission maybe yeah you could be right you, you know? could be right but did you notice there was a little back door that was uh that was uh mentioned in there by dr gordosa um as he's handing it over to senator newman he says uh, it's okay right now doesn't have a lot of, lot of longevity you need to get it into the fridge pretty quick you need to get it into the freezer yeah. pretty quick so um i guess somebody can steal it sit it out in the sun and eventually it'll die off right yeah <laughs> so that's good at least there is a way of of uh, disabling this virus that could kill every single soup on the planet so um i guess if you want to get away from the virus you fly to the other side of the world and you're not at the epicenter yeah. right so they could still use it and it may not get everybody uh, so that's that's really interesting i do also like uh in that moment uh just before the explosion right at the end of the episode that um Senator Newman tells Dr. Cardosa that he's a true American hero for what he's done when yeah. actually he's handed it over to possibly the worst person to have this uh, because she's going to use it for her power. Yeah, I love that she yeah. gives him a blank card as well. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. And then just a drop of blood. Yeah, excellent stuff. <laughs> really good, really good. She's she's pretty evil. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I do, I really would love if they end next episode with some of the virus being uh, escaping, mm-hmm. be it through people when they're freeing people in the woods and some of someone gets it and someone sneezes on someone else and that's it. Or with the heads rolling, the exploder herself, Newman, releasing something. Mm. Now, again, she has to be careful. It will affect exactly, her. Exactly. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. I was just like, hmm. It's not like she's going to kind of like do an evil genius kind of thing where she sets a bomb and just watches everyone die because mm-hmm. she's human and will be fine. No, no. She's as potentially getting affected with this as anyone else. Yeah. So it will be very interesting to see. Or is that her plan? Like, is it kind of she's going to now go get this kind of is there a cure or a vaccine for this virus that she has to get made up first? And then she kind of does it that yeah. way. It's, are we going to see the COVID-19 version of, of this going into the boys universe where everyone's locked down? Well, all I can, all I can say is I'm really glad that we have an announcement that we have another season of Gen V and another season of the boys that Absolutely. may answer some of these questions. So they don't all have to be answered in one episode next week, but there is lots of stuff um, that I'm really excited about coming up next, next week on the yes. final episode. Yeah. Good stuff. Any notes, anyone? I just had one little question. Did I miss something? When did Jordan Lee become Dean Shetty's TA? Is that just automatically transferred when the person he was actually TA for was murdered? Yeah, I think so. Because it was like, <laughs> he just said to Marie, remember, I'm Shetty's TA. And I was going, I don't remember that. Do I remember that? Do I remember a moment when he said he was her TA? He, I don't remember it, but I guess, yeah, it just transferred with uh, Brinkerhoff. I guess so. I just don't remember it. I don't remember there being a moment when Jordan had mentioned that before. So when he said, remember, I'm her TA, I was going, I don't remember that. <laughs> so, But there's lots been going on in the season, so maybe I just missed it. Yeah, I don't remember either, to be honest. I just assumed they were a uh, a kind of SWAT and was a TA for everyone. Yeah. Uh, kind of like multiple professors, I am your TA. Yeah. Well, it was just uh, the way we learned just, last week that the only reason Jordan Lee was TA for uh, for Brinks is because she witnessed um, him almost getting murdered before by his prodigy. So they were offered the role as TA to kind of cover that up, right? So um, does that happen often, that she, that, that they've witnessed uh, something else that uh, the dean possibly had done? So they were offered the position of, of TA for them? I don't know. Uh, I just thought it was odd. Yeah. Anyway, it's only a minor thing. I just thought it was odd, uh, especially the way it was phrased as, don't you remember? Because <laughs> I was going, I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anything else uh, about the episode? Anything else that we haven't talked about? Uh, nothing from me. Nothing from me. So that can only lead us to one thing, gentlemen. Yes, we must wrap up our discussions. So I will ask this question. Derek, do you defend Gen V Season 1, Episode 7? Sick. This season has been absolutely fantastic. I was talking to one of our listeners um, the other day who was just sending me a message um, on on Facebook Messenger saying this show is better than the boys. Um, They love it. Absolutely love it. So, And I was kind of thinking about it. I was going, is it better than the boys? You know, because the boys has source material and they're trying to get, even lightly trying to get from point A to point B, and Gen V is set in this universe but with brand new characters and a brand new story to tell, I think they have really nailed it in this show. Yeah. I think every episode has been something different and something that's really expanded on. The performances have been really good and the writing's been really good, apart from that one crappy scene in this episode, which I wish they just excised. I wish there was some other way that they could have had um, (laughs) that exposition about what the virus is getting across them. As you said, John, he left, Dr. Cardosa left a document on the table that they could have read after he walks out of the room because he clearly does. It's right there. What's this about the virus document that he's just left here? Grand. But I thought it was really badly written, but that's only one scene of a very, very good episode with lots of explosive moments and lots of, exploding heads so um, really enjoyed it Uh, and you know there's one thing about this show that's so different from other crossover shows or spin-off shows you know there's just that token 
crossover character that comes in sometimes when you have a spin-off show like Frasier from Cheers, that kind of stuff in the past, or, the, or all the CW shows. Here, it's so well written. It doesn't feel like a spin-off. It feels like it's intertwined in the universe. Yeah, the people definitely. that are here matter. They're important for being here. They're important to continue the story of the universe. They're not just here to go, hey, do you remember me from that other show you watched? Yes. It really is important. CW, so, it ain't. It is not. It is not. So, uh, so really enjoyed this. Uh, excellent, excellent episode, and really looking forward to the finale of the show chris for the first time this season what's your thoughts on gen v and this episode specifically <laughs> i absolutely love gen v i've been glued to the show um much like most of us <laughs> uh, and most of our listeners uh this is absolutely fantastic i i i like the the different take of the universe it's uh, again We've seen a lot of these CW young generations euphoria style where it's kind of like drugs, sex, alcohol, and a social setting and shake and see what happens. Wow, I think the people at, uh, at HBO would like a word with you about the, the, the comparison there to CW shows and euphoria. <laughs> yeah. It's just a diff- it's different flavor of CW. Um, oh yes, I'd like I, to see the characters from Euphoria uh, take on the characters from uh, Riverdale and cross over. That would be hilarious. Archie. That's where we're going to put. We're going to put Archie yeah. versus Ar- Archie versus Gen V. That's how yeah, this. He works. did fight a bear in uh, in that show. Did they? What? Archie fought a bear I've, in in, really? in Riverdale. Yeah, yeah that's okay. Yeah. I hadn't watched that. Look, everything has happened in Riverdale. You can't even imagine how yeah. far it went. So I've just taken you off track there. Sorry, Chris. Yeah, and don't even mention Sabrina the Teenage Witch. <laughs> oh, well, that, take, that takes my next joke out of, out of play. Well, that's where the actor who plays Andre came from, and Marie. They both came from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. The updated version. Oh, the CW show, yeah. I'm talking about the oh, classic. Wow. Okay. Oh, okay, the classic, that's fine. That's a good, that's the good. Especially when you had Salem with the, yeah. the talking animatronic. Cast. Exactly. Anyway, bringing it back on topic to Genvy, I absolutely love this show. I love this, how they paced each kind of episode, mm-hmm. and I love how they paced this one. Because it does leave me questioning a lot of what's going to happen in the finale. I know we got that fantastic news last week of season two, and I think that, if anything, makes me more hungry for next week. Because I'm like, where are you going to leave this? How are you going to leave on such a high mm-hmm. that... Amazon have already gone, do you know what? We're giving you season two. We we don't even need to wait to see the end of where you get to. This has been spectacular. The viewership's there. The audience is there. The script is there. The, the stars are there. Let's do this. Um, so, yeah, I'm just enthralled with where we're going to see next week. And it's just fun. I think Prime are hitting it out of the park with Wheel of Time, The Boys, Gen V, I'll mention the Rings of Power because I know you guys love it too, and that's it. I think they're just they're they're bringing these great shows together. And I think it's just fantastic. We also podcast about all of those shows here on TV Podcast Industries. So yeah, Rings of Power is fantastic. So really looking forward to the second season of that, as well as the Wheel of Time and uh, and Gen V and the Boys. So yes, uh, absolutely. It's almost like I planned it, but that's what my thoughts. Johners, do you defend? This episode of Gen V, sick. I really do uh, love this episode. I'd give it four and a half fine amber whiskies and a park tiger out of five. Nice. Yes. I, we didn't mention the fact that uh, we have uh, sort of a Black Adder moment by Dr. Cardosa mm-hmm. uh, filling up Shetty's whiskey decanter with um, his his urine. Um, yeah, I hope she didn't stop off there on her way home. Well, exactly. Yeah. That might be um, why she was a little taken aback with Kate and didn't yeah. perform to her best. But <laughs> Or how uh, often has he done that? Was this the first time ever or has he done it? No, he took a drink out of himself. Yeah. So probably but we was do the first know, time ever. You know, in some of our <laughs> other podcasts, when, for example, Jessica Jones, we mm-hmm. did have Whiskey Watch. Just- so it would have been a belter to have sort of uh, a, <laughs> a whiskey urine uh sort of blend, Ooh, I guess, well, going on this time. Dr. Cordoba, but, uh, special, I guess. Yeah, I, I thought this was really, really good. I like how it built, um, you know, around this virus uh, and Kate's, um, I guess, manipulation by Shetty. And I actually thought Kate and Shetty in this episode were superb. I think in terms of the actors, uh, Maddie Phillips and Shelley Kahn, I really, really enjoyed them in this. And it's a real mm. shame if Shelley Kahn has being killed off uh, because I just loved her um, 
just her whole swagger in this season. Uh, but I think the rightful heir has also been part of this with Senator Newman. Mm-hmm. Uh, I loved, uh, again, another manipulative figure in a very different way. Absolutely. And I really, really enjoyed her conversation with Marie. Yeah, um, The parallel between those two as well was yeah. with her kind of taking Marie along as her protege as Kate is pushing away her mentor and exactly. killing her. Effectively. It was just yeah. really, really well done. I, I really enjoyed kind of Sam's little moment here as well and him in a sense, wanting to sort of just release himself from that imprisonment and at the hands of humans. Uh, So, you know, it is soaking up this radical agenda, Mm -hmm. um, either consciously or subconsciously through uh, the influence of of Rufus or just that debate. You know, another important element great getting Mallory in there because you know that idea that as you say they're connecting in with the boys I really cannot wait for uh, next week's episode because with that final scene with the death of Shetty it looks really explosive for this group uh, given you have three of them around the dying body uh, or the dead body of Shetty whereas you kind of have Kate and Sam almost slightly aloof and on the sidelines, Andre. Yeah. So you don't quite know where he might be. So really intrigued to see how uh, the the final episode plays out here. So yes, four fine amber whiskeys uh, and a park tiger out of five. <laughs> mm. um, one quick thing what? that I just realized as you were, as you went through your wrap up there of the episode. Um, so Dean Shetty's dead. Brinkerhoff's dead. Yeah. Polaris. Yeah who's the only other member of faculty that I'm aware of, is in hospital. Where, where are the rest of the faculty at this school? In the arts department. Yeah. Uh, is, is there, you know how, how good is an arts anybody degree else? is. But that's only one college of the five colleges of Godolkin, right? So uh, so who are the people that are taking care of the kids and they're, and they're studying? So uh, Marie's been told to go back to college and get the education, well, but there's nobody the left teachers. to do it now. Yeah, but they're not following every teacher in every they're class. Not. They're not. We just haven't seen anybody else. Is all I all I mean. Because so, if we if we uh, did, so we'd they? have Chris complaining about the pacing. <laughs> Very. Uh, oh. As we go from one teacher to the next, it's spent yeah. far too long on the teachers. True. True. Fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Fair. 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 Just checking in. Anyway, <laughs> I think we need to go for a pint. Let's do it. Yes, gentlemen. We head to the student union for the one and only. Student Union pub quiz. Definitely. A pint followed by a Jägermeister, followed by a Jägermeister bomb, mm-hmm. followed by a top shelf. And yes, hopefully I can get the question out with that amount of alcohol. <laughs> I drink beer. Yes, just like Sam, we will be trying our first beers mm. ever. Yes, we've never had beer before. Never. No. Honestly, never. <laughs> ever, ever. But uh, it is episode seven, so let me roll up with question seven. What does Dean Shetty have in her cupboards that's not British tea? Mm. She does have British tea in there as she well. She does have it, but it's Prob- not what is expected by Andre. He's mm. quite surprised. Yes, she probably has some biscuits in there as well. Not cookies, biscuits. Chocolate delivered. malted milk. <laughs> yeah, delivered have. directly from uh, from Britain. Yes. But do you want to give the question one more time, Dad? Yes. What does Dean Shetty have in her cupboards that's not British tea? Great stuff. That's the seventh of eight questions gathered together. All the answers and email them to us at the end of the season two feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com to be in with a chance of getting your hands on some Gen V goodies. Yes. Uh, Good luck, fellow boys and girls and fellow quizzes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if you enjoyed this, don't forget, you can also just send us your thoughts as well. Bye going on over to facebook.com slash groups slash TV podcast industries and we have a spoiler post for each and every one or if you'd like to tap on the keys on the old email you can send us a feedback at feedback at TV podcast industries.com or just pop on over to our website and all the details are there too if you enjoyed this this feedback section we're about to go into (laughs) where we have all of it okay you make sure what (laughs) why just say let's go into some feedback I was having a fun yeah, but if you but if you enjoyed <laughs> this section, we're about times. to go into now. <laughs> I was going to say you could support us on Patreon. We've done. That. We already did it. Yeah, I know. I know. I was hamming it up. So. 
Thanks. But then, gentlemen, let's head on into our feedback section for this episode. Get it. Got it. Good. I do love that Mm -hmm. piece. Get it. Got it. Good. It's great, isn't it? Uh, First up, we got a message over on Spotify. Uh, Yeah, Yeah, you can follow us over there. There's a QA and a button on any episode uh, where you can send in your thoughts directly to us uh, while listening to the episode. Uh, Jackson sent us a message about Gen V Episode 5. They say, love the episode as always, fellas. However, just one thing. You guys said Sam's puppet fight was like Sesame Street on steroids, but I think you guys might have meant Sesame Street on Campaign V. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well done, Jackson. Good stuff. You got our humor. I love it. Yeah, love it. <laughs> You're totally right, too. Definitely not steroids. Definitely, definitely compound feet. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Jackson. <laughs> Thanks, Jackson. We also have an email on this episode from the one and only Coffee and Vodka. Greetings, fellow infected defenders. As soon as you hear the words, you're the only one who knows about this, right? <laughs> Run. Absolutely. <laughs> So Marie, with her news, has given Newman her weapon against Homelander. A nice tie-in. And we found that there's a right number of sex toys. Has Rufus influenced Sam? Or has he come by this attitude via treatment in the woods? Seems strange for him, in all his innocence, to consider Soup superior to the unveed humans. With Shetty and the Doc dead and the fires contained, unless polarity... Among possible others is a carrier. I wonder what they plan to do with the final episodes. With no main antagonist. Drawn quarter Rufus, maybe? <laughs> Could Andre have super COVID now? Who was Grace talking to on the phone? Could we be seeing Billy and Co. next week? Finally, the scene with Shetty's death seems staged somehow. Could false memories have been created? And is Kate still a threat? So many questions. Between this and Loki, we really need either advanced screenings or a time machine. Five blood sisters, graceful returns, and recycled whiskeys out of five. Happy co-birthdays. Peace and take care. Coffee and vodka. Thanks, Coffee and Vodka. Yeah, excellent stuff. Thank you so much, Coffee and Vodka, for uh, the happy birthday. Mm-hmm. Yes, we had, uh, had two great birthdays. We have, and... Long may it continue into Absolutely. the weekend. Absolutely. <laughs> Shall we say? say it's not over. <laughs> <laughs> they really spread out this birthday thing. Some of us get days, they get multiple weeks. Mine so, was a school day. Yes. So it's like it was uh, Wednesday, so. I had to go to work mm-hmm. on my birthday. Night yeah. <laughs> That's the worst. It is. it is. They should just make it like a holiday for everyone. Yeah. Your own personal yeah. Holiday. Oh, I was talking about your birthday. They should make your birthday a holiday. For <laughs> I might everyone. be a queen, but I'm not that much of a queen. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I used to work for a company that gave us our, our uh, birthdays off on as annual leave Lucky every you. year as an additional day holiday. You just got your day off work. How cool is that? That is very cool. <laughs> like that. Um, but some really good thoughts there, uh, Coffee and Vodka. I think uh, very similar to some of ours. We didn't mention, of course, Sam uh, found uh, Emma's sex toy drawer. And we saw a working version of uh, of Starlight's vibrator. Yeah. Uh, the one that, that yep. they sell through Vault. Um, so we the last time we saw those, they were in a case. I uh, was thinking we were going to well, see Sam using it when she's out the room. <laughs> Maybe. Like, I'm just glad like you didn't just... see Black Noir's yeah. version. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the massive black one. Yes, it is. But yeah. Sam may have yeah. just like put it into his ear or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Rather than uh, up the chocolate starfish. Uh, much like Britney Spears, he's not that innocent, John. <laughs> yeah. But it is good to have options at all times. <laughs> exactly. It is. It is. There is the right number of sex toys. <laughs> Always. In terms of your question, Coffee and Vodka, in terms of like where, who is the big antagonist? I think it's going to be Sam and Kate. I think, yeah. I think we see the split is getting people out of the woods and seeing the antagonists be formed. This is the origin story of a new group of super bads versus super goods. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. But again, like Derek had mentioned, I do like that idea. It's a false memory because. You know, just the way that the scenes played out between Kate and Shetty where you feel she's been turned around Mm -hmm. and then you're suddenly in on something that seems really intense for how it was left previously. Um, And yeah, the the staging of it, it, it's maybe just so that they don't clock it. Uh, So that'll be interesting. Um, And I would certainly be up for that because uh, to have Dean Shetty around, I think would be really cool still. Absolutely. Even though she's a monster, and I do agree with Kate. 
She is totally a monster. Yes, absolutely. Uh, thanks so much, Coffee and Vodka. Um, over on our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TV podcast industries. We did get some other feedback in there. Uh, Scott McAnoida says, I haven't watched yet, but I've got a feeling that Newman is Marie's benefactor and that she might have a similar superpower. They haven't explained exactly what Newman's power is other than head exploding and pushing blood into people's heads would probably do that. Well done, Scott. Absolutely. Much more perceptive than I am. Yeah, very much more perceptive uh, than than myself as well. I I just thought, yeah, she explodes the head. It could be air pressure or something, and it's mainly just because of the eye rolling, because you don't yeah. see that with Marie. Mm-hmm, exactly. So you know, she's got kind of a an eye rolling sort of giveaway. Yes. yes she does. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes, that, well, 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 it's a giveaway until she wears sunglasses. Yes, that is, that's how, that's how she does her Clark Kent moment. It. Yeah. It's like sunglasses on, she, but she is that person then that wears sunglasses inside and you're like, oh, you're that person. Never be that person that wears sunglasses inside people. Yeah, thanks so much for the feedback, Scott. Um, David Mr. Rice says, well, the twists and turns and the curves don't stop. Get it, got it, good. Mm-hmm. So that was interesting. Basically gave us the Newman backstory through Marie's life. Two birds, one stone. It was a sweet moment between the both of them. Even now, I know Newman is up to no good. It was nice to see Marie get some sort of connection there. Newman is so great and her character. She's the female version of Homelander, the way she portrays the character. So charismatic, but diabolical. Didn't see reasoning behind Dean planning a mass virus but glad to see how they're still eating off the airplane crash. Uh-huh. This is leading up to a crazy end game finale with a huge fight. I'm terrified to see an unleashed Sam. This is probably why they used puppet scenes when Sam killed all those guards. They're saving all their blood allocations for the finale. <laughs> I am more, yes, but they lost a lot of glitter allocations yes, in the process. Um, <laughs> David continues, I'm wondering if it's Kate that caused Polarity's seizure so it would give her a chance to deal with Dean Shetty alone. Mm -hmm. If so, she's got Professor X-level powers. Overall, very good episode that's leading up to a wild finale. Whoever did the casting for this show really nailed it out the park. All these actors have been so incredible in their portrayal. The closing score was a perfect touch. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, uh, David. Yeah, I totally agree. I think these actors have been just fantastic. Really good. Uh, and a nice little theory there around possibly Kate being involved in some way with uh, Polarity's seizure, which would be really um, sort of a hit for Andre. I mean, even more so if that were the case. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if it was her that had done it, yeah. Well, that'd be good. It would, actually. It, it would also be pretty... Um, malicious, wouldn't it? Actually, mm-hmm. from yeah, her. yeah, because yeah, I I do see Andre as a, a kind of fifty fifty at this moment. I honestly don't know whether he would. I, is he going to join of the side of Super Lives Matter? Is he going to join Kate and Sam? Yeah, or is he going to stake? Like he he could flip because essentially we know they don't have their mom in the picture. So Dad potentially being like hurt by what could be seen as someone else. Mm-hmm. Or can be pushed on as I, I like. No one cares about my dad. I have to only superheroes get superheroes. It it will be a good interesting thing. And then we can we know Kate cares, and that they did have this thing. And I can see him being this kind of piece where they're trying to pull people. Like they're going to be pulled from both sides. He's going to be the, the 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 cog in the middle. of Where is he going to land? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. we, when we learned last episode inside Kate's mind, we've learned that she is in love with Andre. I think that's yeah. also something that will be in the back of his head if he has to choose sides. Will he go with Andre or will he go with the people that he just kind of likes and the other yeah. the other newer friends? So, yeah, uh, yeah, interesting. Absolutely, stuff. and totally with you around Newman. Uh, like she's. Great great and i think you know from this series of gen v you know a great successor to dean shetty as well absolutely excellent stuff thanks david mr writer yeah thanks david mr writer thanks david the last piece of feedback for this week comes from dr bobs phillips who had this to say no no but no they what no no (laughs) oh my god no Mostly a summary of anything I could turn into words while watching. <laughs> the links to the boys here are fantastic. From 
from the flights that doomed Xena the Warrior Princess through Senator Pimple Popper <laughs> and the scary spy boss, who I'm sure had Frenchie on, on a one. Mm, yeah. But you didn't need to know any of them. What a setup for the finale. Gore glory and season two. Ahoy. Thanks, Dr. Bob's. And I absolutely love the way that you say the flight that dooms Xena, i.e. kind of, in a way, reminding everyone that this was the flight that really took Queen Maeve off the board or began her journey, yeah. her descent to being taken off the board Absolutely, season three. Absolutely. Um, yeah, another another vote for Frenchie being on the line with, uh, with the senator. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, loads of gore. And the season two, really good stuff. I love Senator Pimple Popper as well. Uh, I might just have to use that in our closeout. <laughs> I think we might have to, yes. Uh, so stuff. thank you, Dr. Bob, indeed, <laughs> for the feedback. Uh, Great stuff. Thanks so much for joining us. And thanks for coming back, Chris, uh, for the seventh episode and the penultimate episode. Unfortunately, we know already you're not going to be with us for the finale of Gen V next week. Uh, Guardians of Godolkin uh, is out next Friday. But uh, you're not going to be able to join us for that one. I won't. But I will be back for Prime's next biggest hit, Invincible Season 2. Yes, good stuff. The first of four episodes dropping next week and then continuing weekly. Yes. It's going to be fantastic. If you haven't watched it yet, make sure you go check out all of Season 1 on Prime right now. It is animated goodness and gory and superhero and amazing. Yeah. Just do it. I think if you like The Boys or Gen V, you're going to like that. Uh, if you haven't seen Invincible yet, um, it's definitely a crossover. And I've heard some people say that Invincible is even better than The Boys for them. So, um, so yes. And that stuff. was me saying that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I do love Invincible. And it's just myself and Chris on that one. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, we will, of course, be continuing our coverage of Loki. Uh, we're on to episode four later this week. Uh, myself and John on that one. Uh, and only a couple more episodes left of Loki before we go back to the cinema for The Marvels. Mm. Uh, the next movie in the MCU, which I'm really excited about, too. Yes, a yes. new beginning. The yes. Marvels. And if you're doing a Marvel rewatch, make sure you watch Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel over on Disney+. Plus. Absolutely, and uh, WandaVision, and uh, maybe even yep. Secret Invasion, because Nick Fury's going to be in there too. So uh, watch all those, uh, and all covered here on TV Podcast Industries, uh, as we cover so much stuff uh, on our podcast. So, But lots of stuff still to come later in the year as well. Uh, great stuff. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk to you again next time. Thanks so much, and I'll speak to you all again for the first episode of Season 2 of Invincible. Excellent stuff. Yes, thank you, fellow boys, and of course, quizzes for joining us for this episode. Episode 7 of Gen V. A pleasure discussing all things bloody and nasty with you, of course. Mm -hmm. But until next time, keep watching, keep listening, and thank you, Dr. Bob. Keep popping pimples. Bye. Bye. Bye.